Hey guys, Tonic here, and today I am going to be going over a bunch of quick Fallout 76 tips for new and returning players. I'm going to be going over some helpful tips that I wish I knew when I started, some game settings that you should consider, and some general tips that can make the game a bit easier. There should be something in this video for everyone, whether you are a brand new player or someone who has been playing for a while. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First up, let's talk about a quick and easy way to get some fusion cores. Now fusion cores can take a while to farm and there are plenty of methods. You could take a workshop and farm the fusion core generator or find a player vendor that has them for cheap or you could just craft them normally. However, crafting them does require some flux and low to mid level players won't have a whole lot of flux to be spending on cores, so I actually like to craft Gatlin lasers. Every time you craft a weapon it comes with some free ammo. So you will get a full fresh fusion core for each one you craft, and if you know the plan and have enough materials, you can craft as many fusion cores as you need without spending any flux. Now this still is a bit costly with materials and you do need to know the plan, but if you throw the super duper perk on and the scrapper perk, you can craft a few and then you can just scrap them again and you will keep the fusion cores and get some of those crafting materials back. Up next, let's talk about changing your spawn position when fast traveling to your camp. Sometimes when you build your camp and fast travel to it, you will end up in a random spot. If you built up on a mountain, sometimes you will spawn at the bottom of the mountain and have to walk back up or try fast traveling again. And sometimes you will randomly spawn inside of objects or get stuck in a spawn at the back of your camp. And to fix this, simply just take your camp module and move it somewhere else. Then fast travel back to your camp and you should be in a new position. Then just mess around with its placement a bit and eventually you will get consistently good spawns. Now I like to use this trick to get players to spawn directly in front of my vendors so that way they don't have to run around looking for them and sometimes I will just set the spawn point so people spawn right in front of my main entrance. Have you ever finished an event and gotten tons of heavy legendary power armor pieces that just weigh you down? Well it happens to me all the time and over time I found that carrying an empty power armor frame can really help with this. In Fallout 76 you can carry a power armor frame and it only takes up 10 carry weight and at the same time lots of different power armor pieces take up around 10 to 14 carry weight. So if you carry an empty power armor frame on you, once you have a few legendary pieces and get over encumbered, just go ahead and place down the frame and then add on your power armor pieces. Then collect the frame and you will have saved on a ton of carry weight. This one trick has saved me from a ton of long over encumbered walks to the nearest script vendor or train station, and using this trick I can normally just fast travel over, take the parts off the frame and then script them. Next up, there is a way to find the scrap you are looking for faster. To do this, just go into your pit boy, go over to the junk menu, and then hit component view. From here, just tag the scrap that you want to look for, and with that scrap selected, whenever you are looking at items in containers, a small magnifying glass will appear next to items that can be broken down for that material. This is very helpful for finding specific resources and even for just learning what items you should be looking out for. And at number 5 we have the Quick Boy. This is basically just a different view of your Pip Boy. To get into the Quick Boy view, open up your Pip Boy and then look around the bottom of the screen and you will see a button to change your view. Select that button and you will now have the Quick Boy setting active. I really like the way it looks and it's actually a bit faster to get into your inventory because you don't have to wait for the Pip Boy animation. And while we are talking about the Pit Boy, let's also talk about renaming items. This can be extremely useful for when you start using a main weapon or a specific set of armor. When I look at my inventory, my armor set all has a star next to the name so I know not to drop them or scrap them and they are all in order for quick access, and it's the same with my weapons. To do this, just inspect the item that you want to rename, then at the bottom hit the rename button and you can type whatever you want. I usually put a symbol in front so that they all stay grouped together. Next up, I have a quick tip for some inventory management. Once you start to build a collection of some weapons and armor, you will find that your stash fills up pretty fast. But there is a way to squeeze a few more items in. To do this, just take out your weapons and start removing any heavy mods. For example, this handmade has all the mods that I like to use on it, but I'm not currently using this weapon, so removing the silencer and the stock and all of that kind of stuff actually removes about 5 pounds off this weapon. And if you were to do this with most weapons in your stash, you could free up a good amount of space. And speaking of saving space, you should also scrap all of your junk whenever you can and especially before you put it into your stash box. Junk in this game can get pretty heavy, but once you break it down it becomes very light. For example, after grabbing all of those weights and concrete bags, my weight was at 470, but after scrapping the junk my weight went down to 363. So always be sure to scrap your junk to save on space. Unless you have Fallout first, then you can just throw it in your scrap box and it will automatically break it down for you. 
And while we are talking about scrapping stuff, you should also always scrap any extra weapons you come across. This will of course give you some materials, but it will also automatically learn some mod plans for that weapon. So if you don't have many mods unlocked for a handmade rifle for example, you can scrap a few of them and you will learn some mods. This works for almost any weapon you find and it will also work for armor. Up next, let's talk about a food that can be extremely helpful. This is going to be grilled radstag, and all you need is some radstag meat, some wood, and a cooking station. And you can get a great carry weight buff. This will normally give some health and plus 20 carry weight, which is already a massive bonus for a food that's so easy to craft. But if you do have the carnivore mutation, it will actually double the effects, and you can get a temporary plus 40 carry weight bonus. This food can be extremely helpful if you don't have a good backpack yet, or if you just need a quick carry weight boost. For the next tip, I highly recommend that you check out other player vendors for camp plans. When I started playing, I was always spending a ton of caps at train station vendors and the White Spring Resort for basic plans, but eventually I started checking out player vendors and it saved me a ton of caps. You can almost always find some really good deals at player vendors. And for the next tip, it's a bit of a quick one, but I would just recommend turning on pacifist mode until you are ready to start PvPing. Pacifist mode can be turned on or off from the settings menu under game options. At tip number 13, we have a neat way to discover some new locations on the map. To do this, find a watchtower and climb up to the top. Once up top, along the railings, you will get a prompt to scan the area. Now as you can see on this character, I have no locations discovered ahead, but when you go ahead and scan the area, you will discover a few locations nearby. Now you can't directly fast travel to these locations right after doing this, but it will mark them on your map. And the same goes for train stations. When you discover a train station, head inside and you will find a map with some pins. Then all you have to do is click on the pin and it will mark that train station on your map. Up next, let's talk about utilizing some free fast travel locations. In game, there are several locations that are free to travel to. There is Vault 76, Crater, Your Own Camp, Fort Atlas, and Foundation. And then on top of that, you can also join a public group and fast travel to the members of that group and their camps for free. When you are just starting out, I highly recommend joining these groups because on top of the free fast traveling, they will also give you a slight bonus to your stats. Up next we have one of my favorite tips on the list, and that is the Sulphur Fountain at the White Spring Resort. At this location you will find a gazebo, and if you head inside there is a fountain that will cure all diseases. So if you caught a disease and maybe have no disease cures, you can head to this fountain and drink out of it and it will get rid of your disease for free. I use this all the time and I highly recommend checking it out. This next tip took me a while to figure out. When using VATS in Fallout 76, you will have a crit meter that fills up, and you can hit the crit button to execute a critical hit. Now when fighting tougher enemies, I always found myself mashing that button so I could get a ton of crits in, but you can actually just hold down the crit button and it will automatically activate every time it gets full. This next one is a setting that I highly recommend turning on, and that is to show the damage numbers. You will find the setting under display all the way at the bottom, and turning it on will allow you to see just how much damage you are doing. It's great for testing out and seeing the damage output from different legendary effects and how different weapon mods and certain perk cards can change your damage, and I almost always have the setting on, it's pretty useful. And for tip number 19, I would recommend that you play this game at your own pace. It's easy to get overwhelmed in the early stages of Fallout 76, you could walk around for an hour and end up with a screen like this just full of quests and it seems really intimidating. But one of the best tips I can give you is that you shouldn't rush through it, at least in the early parts of the game. You should just take your time and treat it like any other Fallout game. If you find a quest that seems interesting, just focus on that and turn off the others until you are done. There are so many great side quests and locations to explore and characters to meet, and if you rush through it, you are going to miss out on some great stories. The end game will always be there, and there will always be something that you can rush through and grind for, but you only get to experience your first playthrough once. So enjoy your playthrough and play at your own pace. Don't try to catch up to the high level players right away, and don't feel pressured to blow through all of these quests as fast as possible. And finally, for the last tip, I have mentioned this before in some of my videos, but the community for this game is awesome, so if you need anything, just ask. In Fallout 76, it's very common for high-level players to run up to newer players and just drop items. They will drop you stim packs, rat away, ammo, weapons, really anything that you need and more. So if you see a high-level player chasing after you and shooting at the ground, chances are they are trying to help you out, and if they drop some items for you, then those items are yours if you want them. They almost never want anything in return. It's sort of become a tradition in this game to help out others, and it's just great. The community for this game is phenomenal. 
But that is pretty much going to be it for this video, so I hope that you found some of these tips helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching, I really appreciate it. And as always, I would like to give a massive thank you to all of the channel members. Mazader, Theodore, Slappy Sauce, Cookie Monster, Fallout Fan 76, Robert Kennard, Anxiety Ranger, As Death 93, King Kittens, Omni Protus, Terry Lockridge, Dalton Murphy, Victrix, Argent Deer, Shaky Hands Workshop, Axel, Kevin W, Anna S, Fallout McFly, Network Gate, Golti, Wandering Wastelander, Lanthar, Captain Awesome, Citizen Girl, Heather Henderson, Patrick Ruta, 23 Ice Fire, Jay Smith, Bowser Double Frank, Digital Aardvark, Christy Mellon Schwitz. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys and have a great day.